Marshall Chapman, our next presenter, rose from a conservative South Carolina background to become a rock and roll pioneer. She was born in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and like so many of us, says that Elvis Presley changed her life. You're not supposed to laugh. He's just, ah, yes, that's true. <laughs> she went to Vanderbilt University. She majored in French, but she's written number one hit songs and recorded 10 critically acclaimed albums. Her music has been recorded by artists like Conway Twitty, Joe Cocker, Sawyer Brown, Jimmy Buffett, and Emmylou Harris. And I promise you, if she comes out here and doesn't charm you, it's because you are made of stone. <laughs> Marshall Chapman. Uh, you're going to fix this so we don't make a weird noise, right? Here we go. All right, I'm going to start off singing a song that um, <clears throat> I wrote shortly after 9-11. I was watching Larry King live, and he was, uh, Larry's guest was uh, Billy Graham. And um, he was asking him some hard questions. It was a hard interview, and I was really impressed uh, with everything. I was riveted. <clears throat> I remember one of the questions uh, Mr. King asked uh, Billy Graham. He said, Reverend, do you think God loves those men that flew those airplanes into the World Trade Towers as much as he loves you. And without batting an eye, Billy Graham said, absolutely. I don't know about y'all, but the older I get, the cuter Billy Graham gets. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I uh, was inspired enough to write this song, which was my reaction to those events. And there may be a part in here for anybody that wants to sing along. You'll know it, you'll know it by the time it comes along, all right? I love everybody. I love everything. I got no agenda I just want to dance and sing It ain't complicated There's nothing really to explain Cause I love everybody Charles Park I love everything All right We're living in a world of trouble we're living in a world of pain. All I got to do is turn my TV on to see a world that's gone insane. I think there might be a solution if people everywhere would sing. Y'all sing with me. Yeah, now I don't care about the weather. I can take it come rain or shine. I never feel stuck in a traffic jam or waiting in that checkout line. There's nothing going to get up underneath my skin or stop me when I feel this way. I got a confession to make. I don't always love everybody and everything. If 
fact, we were driving down I-75 between Nashville, Tennessee, and Atlanta yesterday, and some SOB in a SUV cut right in front of me, and I wanted to kill him. <laughs> but you know what I love about singing this song? Like, singing it right now, like right now in this moment, which is the only moment we've ever got to live. What I love about it is while I'm actually singing it, I love everybody. I love everything. Thank you. Before I forget, I want to thank uh, Philip Whitley for asking me to come over here to Greenville, and uh, I grew up over there in Spartanburg, and so it's always great to uh, be in the vicinity. I love days like today. Everything stays green in the winter over here. Man, in Nashville, it just goes gray for three months. We don't have these pine trees, and uh, it makes my heart big to be here. Thank you. Um, this is something I wrote right after 9-11, and I was just wondering, what in the heck am I going to do over there? And um, I was on my computer like the two nights ago, and I'd, I'd totally forgotten about it. It's something I wrote down right after 9-11, and it was uh, right after seeing President Bush address the joint session of Congress. After 9-11, I had a dream. Like everyone, my husband Chris and I sat riveted in front of the TV, awaiting the moment when President Bush would address the joint session of Congress. The whole world was watching. It was one of those moments that could chart the course of history for decades to come or define a presidency. Wouldn't it be great if he'd just walk up there and say nothing, I said to Chris. Just hold up a placard with the words, we will not retaliate, written on one side, and God bless us all, written on the other. I don't think that's going to happen, Chris said. <laughs> yeah, but wouldn't it be great if it did? I didn't think my idea was so far-fetched. Later, the president could explain that, yes, we would increase security in our airports and at our borders and in our harbors. Yes, we would become more vigilant as a nation. And yes, we would pursue the mastermind behind this heinous act which killed thousands. But at the same time, we would look inward as a nation, do some soul searching. After all, what child is born on this earth thinking, hmm, I believe when I grow up, I'll fly a commercial jetliner into a big, tall building full of people, hopefully killing everybody. That's just not normal. We would open the lines of communication with all nations, including our Arab brothers and sisters, and not simply because we want their oil. And no, Mr. Rumsfeld, I don't think we should use this tragedy to invade Iraq. Yes, they have their problems but we've got ours. We're killing too many of our own people. We pollute too much. We consume too much. Let's concentrate on ours and allow Iraq the dignity of dealing with theirs without our intervention. After all, we've had some ugly periods in our American history. Take the Civil War, for instance. What if Iraq had come over here to straighten us out? Hey, America, you can't be the land of the free and have slavery, too. We're going to declare a war on slaveryism. Come over there and straighten you guys out in the name of Allah. We're going to do it. You'll be thanking us when it's all over. <laughs> no, we Americans would not have liked that one damn bit. Another country coming in here telling us what to do, imposing their values on us while we're going through our growing pains as a nation over our dead bodies. We will not retaliate. Would Congress have applauded? 
would there have been stunned silence? Would there have been yelling and jeering like we see in British Parliament on BBC? You ever watch that? It cracks me up. <laughs> we'll never know. We will not retaliate. It sounds like something Jesus might have said, or Gandhi, or Martin Luther King. We will not retaliate. It was a moment. It could have happened, but it didn't. Since then, America's moved so far in the other direction that the concept sounds crazier than ever. But I'm sticking with it. A dream, yes, but you got to start somewhere. Thank you. song that I recorded on an album years ago, and uh, I was honored that Emmylou Harris sang it with me all the way through. It's called, well, you'll know what it's called. Ooh, I'm a dream. I believe in things nobody can see. A dreamer, it's my job rearranging reality. If people think I'm crazy, I don't care. If people think I'm lazy, they are unaware. It's a full-time job, I'm a dreamer My imagination runs away with me A dreamer It's a trip to be this happy and free My head's in the clouds, what a view Shout it out loud, maybe you, you are a dreamer too. Ah, 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 ah. ah, ah, ah. the least I can do I may never hold down but I dream that I do yeah 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 I'm a dreamer I believe in things nobody can see A dreamer Imagination runs away with me A dreamer Every day I dream is an adventure Dreamer I dream from January to December, dreamer. I've been this way since I can remember a dreamer. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. Thank you so much. <laughs>